Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of At Home, uh, the series where I get a chance to talk to a lot of folks, different backgrounds, different walks of life about how things are for them right now in the midst of COVID uh, with all of us being at home and how that changes our family life and our work life. So today I'm really excited to have somebody on from a, a live challenge that I did back in April, uh, a group where I had to go live every single day for 30 days, met a ton of amazing people. And one of those uh, folks is going to join us today. His name is Tag Tuck. Tag, thanks for being on the show. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. So I just start every show off with, how are you doing? Ah, uh, you know, we're doing okay. Uh, it has been a real pivot. Um, you know, being a pastor, uh, I mean, our uh, we're planting a church, which is like starting a new church. So we don't oh, wow. have our own building. Uh, oh, okay. We actually uh, we actually started in 2018 meeting in a school in a local school. So as soon as the COVID thing happened, we couldn't meet in the school anymore. Uh, so we had to pivot to online live streaming. And of course, that's how you and I met was uh, in the leader mm -hmm. challenge as we were just trying to figure out how to do this. How do you do how do you do church um, like this? Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you do something that's supposed to be totally together with people? Um, completely apart from the people that you're doing it with. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a really interesting thing. And when I was, when I reached out to you the other day about having you on the show, it, my first inclination was when I thought about church, I mean, it, church isn't really a part of my, my, my life necessarily, but as I thought about that, it, it seems to be, it's a very relationship heavy or focused engagement yeah. between people. And on top of that, in my mind, it's been traditionally something I thought of as you need to be in a space. Of course, as soon as I heard some of your presentations in our leader challenge, it really helped me realize that like that actually doesn't seem super true. It just something you can engage with the people on. So I guess I'm really curious for you, how has it been for you personally and for you and the relationship with your congregation having to be totally virtual? Right. Yeah. I think uh, there are some things like just my personality is such that being on camera, like when I was a kid, I'm I'm kind of a natural performer and doing things in front of the camera was kind of fun for me as a kid. So there are some aspects of this that are fun. And there are, and of course there are some aspects of doing church that, um, that are performance oriented. Like the fact that you, I mean, if we were just gonna use, if we were just gonna use tech language about it, it's like every week there is something that you perform when you do church. Uh, of course, the heart of it is that church isn't a performance, but that that uh, corporate public worship is something that is performative. Like when you gather a group of people together and someone leads them through a worship service, something, something happens. Um, that connects the people together and that we hope connects all those people with God. And so the big question I think on our minds has been, can you do that when I'm sitting here at my house with a camera and the people in my congregation are sitting at their houses, you know, either with an iPad or a laptop mm -hmm. and, and what does that do? So, so for me, the choice to do church in a live stream rather than some churches, churches have done all kinds of different things. They've pre-recorded things. Um, or they've, they've pre-recorded their whole service. I think really large churches that already were doing some kind of video production um, just went with that. But I was kind of thankful that we're a small church and we had to pivot and figure it out. And live streaming was really great for us because I keep, I keep telling my people every week, um, God can use this medium just as much as he can use any other medium where we're live. Um, I mean, we believe that God hears us pray. Like, I believe that right now, uh, people in China, uh, people in Antarctica, people in Brazil, people in the United States are all praying. And in some of those places, it's the middle of the night. Um, and God can hear all those prayers and he doesn't have to translate the languages. So if he can do that, um, he can connect us together if we're doing church in a live stream media. Yeah, that's super. Um, you know, it's really an interesting thing to hear. And I, I, I actually have two follow-on questions or one's kind of a yeah. comment once or observation or one sort of a question. One of them is I, at, in, in my role, we were talking beforehand about what I do professionally and I'm in, I'm in tech sales for a, a large organization, which I've mentioned before. Um, and I've noticed that a lot of the folks I work with on a regular basis really have been reticent to adopt any sort of idea of going live or recording their own videos, being on YouTube, whatever. And, you know, I've, I've done a lot in the last few months related to that as you and I both have. 
And it's so interesting to hear how reticent those people are to wanting to do this because it's a new thing. They're not comfortable with whatever. Yet to hear you talk about it, it's like, I don't want to say it's necessarily a natural transition, but it's very, it sounds a lot like there's so many natural corollaries between what you did, how you did it before the engagements and the relationship building and how you do it now and the, the message you're delivering that it doesn't sound like it was a massive, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a lot, but it doesn't sound like no. it was a massive lift to really get to this point. I mean, the lift was in the tech, right? Like there's a tech lift, um, but it was something like the tech lift was sort of in the back of my head, had been in the back of my head um, for a while. Like I had actually, I had bought a Mevo camera early on mm -hmm. um, thinking about doing something and it had sat in my basement for almost a year. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And I was like, all of a sudden, you know, like something that I was starting to feel guilty about. I was like, yeah. oh, I, I spent this money on this Mevo camera. And when you're starting, like, you know, churches, churches are the kind of institution that people laugh because it's like, oh, well, it takes 17 meetings to get anybody to spend some money on anything. Well, when you're just starting a church, like I don't have a bunch of committees to run things through. So I had bought this camera sort of, sort of, you know, on a hope. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I was starting to feel guilty about it. And then it was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I bought this camera because we need it tomorrow. And we, you know, we figured it out. Yeah. But uh, so like, so there was a tech lift. The other side of that though, um, I will say is like, there's sort of a, there's sort of a saying um, in the church and, and among some of the churches that I serve, it's, it's uh, fixed, uh, fixed method or fixed message, flexible methodology, right? Like, Okay. Yeah. I, yeah it, it's sort of like the same thing. Like you're in sales, like you can do sales. Um, uh, you know, you, you have a product that you're selling as long as the product is a, is a viable product. You, you sell it however you can. Some of that's in person. Some of that's, you can sell on the phone, you can sell in person, you can sell, you know, or the thing I'm not trying to sell something. I mean, I know mm -hmm. some people out there think that pastors are always trying to sell people something, but, um, <laughs> but I liked how you said it when we were talking about your job, uh, like you can't make someone sign the paper. Um, mm -hmm. And I can't, I can't make someone, I can't make someone trust God or trust Christ or trust my, trust me. I can just, I can just put my message out there. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the, this is the medium in which I can use to, to put the message out there. I like that. It's a really, actually I wrote that down. Fixed method. You said fixed method, flexible methodology. Uh, flick, uh, fixed message. Fixed like message. Yes, that makes yeah. a lot more sense. I yeah, like yeah. that. That's a, it's a, it very much fits in 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 line with uh, Carol Dweck's research on growth versus fixed mindset because it's like you have a thing you're trying to deliver on, you're going to hit that, but how you get there, it, I don't want to say it doesn't matter because it does matter, but it matters less because you're as long as you find a way to get there, you're going to still get to the point that you need to be at. Uh, the way that I've kind of described something very similar to people when I've talked about, because I do a lot of like time planning and day planning things um, is like right now I do all my day planning back in a, a paper book, but I used to yeah. do it in my iPad and I've tried all kinds of tools. And yeah. the, the coaching I've given people is when you're doing this, like the tool matters because you need something to implement this process that you're trying to do, but it also doesn't matter at all because I should be able to change this out to, I don't know, sticky notes tomorrow. If I want to, it doesn't matter. So long as you have something you are delivering what you're trying to get done by that's what's important. So this isn't as important as the thing you're trying to accomplish in the end. Yeah, that's exactly, that is exactly it. And you know, like that makes me think about one of the things that I say almost every week on our live stream is, Hey, um, this is a different medium. Like I've been telling people to like type things in the comments, type questions in the comments and, and use like the like and emoji buttons. And I think people are so used to, um, people are used to something when they come to church. Uh, like we don't like our church is is not very charismatic. We're you know if you were to walk in on our service, it it might seem kind of it, it might seem boring depending on your personality. Um, but and but I you know most of my folks are on Facebook where they hit likes and hearts and and mm -hmm. crazy stuff. And so when you combine those two things together, I have to remind my folks. I say, hey, 
we're using this medium. We're going live on Facebook. So I want you to have fun. We want to have fun with this medium. We want you to have fun with this medium. So use those things and ask your questions because I think some people think it's like whispering in church. And I say, when you use the emoji button in the middle of my sermon or whatever, that's how I, that's how this medium works is how I get some feedback. You know, it's not like like whispering in church, like do that. Um, Yeah. I I like that. Yeah. It's, and that's I, a really interesting. Actually, that leads me to something I was curious about. Oh, is, there you go. What has the feedback been from? And because everything you just described, like this interface for social media, social interactions through a piece of media like Facebook, insert product platform here, is common. Everyone click, you click a like, a thumb up, you know, upvote something, whatever term you use, it's all the same. How has that interaction through something like Facebook and exactly what you just described, what's the feedback you've received from your congregation on? how the relation, how they feel like the relationship exists between them and their beliefs, them and you, them and the group, all of that. Yeah. Um, I think for many of them, like, I think it was a weird, I think it was kind of weird. Um, but, but many of them have taken to it. You know, I think every, everyone wants to get back together. Like everyone wants to be in person again. Um, and I think, I think in a lot of different organizations and a lot of anything that you have done with people, people want to get back together again. But because we've been forced to use this medium, people have been able to, people have figured out how to be together in this medium. So, um, so I was telling you that our church service is sort of a, is fairly traditional. Um, Even though we're meeting in a school, like I had a, you know, a big wooden table up front and a a wooden pulpit. And I was, I was doing something that's, that is, uh, maybe you'd call it retro. Like I was wearing a robe and collar, which a lot of guys aren't wearing robes and collars anymore, but I was kind of going back and trying that. Well, when we pivoted and started doing a live stream from our living room, um, like I had to think about that. What does that mean? So I, I ditched the robe and collar, you know, I'm just wearing Mm -hmm. jeans, you know, jeans and a shirt. Um, my daughter is standing up singing next to me. My wife plays piano and we have her piano in our house. Um, and so it just, we just had to relax some things and like, think about, think about how like late night hosts pivoted late night hosts usually wear suit tie. They sit behind a desk. It looks sort of like a news desk, but mm-hmm. when Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, and those guys did it in their house, they, they switched up the medium a little bit. And when, when I did that, folks in my congregation said, Hey, we feel we like, they were surprised. They were like, we really felt like we were worshiping. We felt connected oh. to you like we do, you know, it's just like, yeah. so you've got to figure out how the, how the medium works for you. If I had, if I had put on a robe and collar and you were watching it on Facebook, I think it would have fallen flat really fast. It's a I really mean, good, it's a really interesting point because it, it, what you're describing it, sort of the way that I've seen it is the, or I've, I've seen something very similar is you're, ex- you're essentially exposing your own humanity. I mean, that's probably a bit existential to say it, but it's true. You're exposing the humanity behind, this is our life. You're seeing us at home. Here's my family. We're here just in our living room. And you, whether you intend it to or not, I think it has an unconscious or a subconscious effect on the audience to feel like, oh, I'm being let into a personal space with somebody. I can kind of let my own guard down a little bit and actually feel more like a normal person with these people rather than as you said before, inadvertent stoicism by standing up there at stoicism is probably the wrong word, but like stand up there yeah, in like yeah. the Roman collar and feel like, okay, I'm watching somebody in a church someplace that I don't have a connection with. This is just a stream of content. Like I'm taking a training session. It's less of that and more of, hi, we're at home just like you. Let's have a right. conversation. Like let's not, nobody, and during this pandemic, nobody has been fooling each other. Like I think we <laughs> okay. were all, we're trying to figure it out, right? Like the first 10 Zoom meetings, um, you had the first 10 Zoom meetings that you went to, uh, you had guys who were in, you know, T-shirts and sweatpants and dudes who were in suits. And yes. pretty quickly, do. <laughs> right? Like, somewhere here, it's like, you know what? I just, I don't need to fool anybody. I don't need to wear a tie because everyone knows I'm at home doing this. Yeah. No one is thinking that I am phoning this in from the home office. Yeah. You know, I, I think that makes, I think the embracing of that makes such a huge difference in how you build the relationship with other people. As you said, we have to pivot. We have to be doing this in a different way, but the core of what we're doing is still the same. We're still building relationships with people. That's what you do yes. every day and reinforce and, and care and feed those relationships over a period of time um, for now. I won't even say a different reason than the reason I do it in sales. It's not any different. We do it for this. The outcome that we're hoping for is a little different, but that, that kind of doesn't matter. 
it's almost, it really is the journey that we're getting to, to that outcome that is more important. And that journey is almost identical to one another. Well, this is the thing, right? It's like, uh, at the heart of sales and at the heart of pastoral ministry is I want to, I want to give you something that, that I believe at the depth of my heart will make your life better. And if you do pastoral ministry, if you, if uh, there are plenty, I mean, like there are plenty of, there are plenty of predatory pastors in the world. There are plenty of people who are going to have something that I believe are going to have something to answer for at the end of time. Um, and nobody likes, nobody likes a greasy salesman. Like there are salesmen in the world who are in it for mm -hmm. themselves. But if you can, if you can face your own stuff and say, I want, I want to go give the world something that I believe is good and I want to give it to them. I, I will do whatever it takes to give them something good in a good way. Um, then, then you will find yourself, you will find yourself selling things. You will find yourself, you will find people who will open up to you. You will find, mm -hmm. you know, you will find relationship and you will find community. 100%. I, and, I couldn't right, agree more. Right. Like right. you talk about adding value, adding value. That's that old proposition. It's, you know what, getting back to basics, I think is key for these, this sort of medium, this sort of interaction, regardless of what the outcome you want is, you know, sales, pastoral ministry, it doesn't really matter. The outcome is still the same. Am I adding value to these people, to the folks that I'm more, I'm talking to or I'm engaging with? If I am, great, continue doing those sorts of things. If I'm not, just take a step back and reevaluate. We're doing this on my team at work. Um, I asked my team directly the other day, hey, how do you want to run our weekly meetings? How, how do you want them to actually look? And one of the one of the guys on my team said, "Here's what I think we should do." Okay, do you mind running the next one? He goes, "Yeah, absolutely." So we did it, and everyone had a blast. I just kind of stepped back. I contributed at the end, but they had a way of doing it. I said, "I'm not going to read out information to you anymore. We'll do this instead. It's 45 minutes." They all walked away saying, "That's exactly what we're going to do." It's that's what the relationship needed to be, and so that's what we're going to do. And at the end of the day, they're getting value out of it, and that's I have to accept that it's not about me. It's about the value that they're getting. I'm just facilitating bringing that value to them. And I think it's the, it, it's the same thing for both of us. I would imagine. Right. That's uh, servant leadership, servant leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this, the, the story in the Bible about that is the one where the, the Gentile, uh, the, the disciples are arguing about who's the greatest. And Jesus comes to them and he says, he says, Hey, you know, that the guys that the rulers, that the Roman rulers lorded over, the people that they follow because they have the power to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. He was like, it won't be so among you, but the greatest among you will be your servant. And I know, you know, uh, the servant leadership stuff like that started with uh, Roger Greenleaf. Is that the guy who wrote the book? I in think the so. Yeah. I he think, says, I think you so. know, I, I, I appreciate all that stuff. All everything that's come out on servant leadership in the business world has been great. And a lot of pastors, you know, eat that up. Robert Greenleaf said that he didn't, that he didn't get any of that from any particular faith. Um, thing or that, you know, like he was kind of like trying to say, Hey, this is new. And I was like, okay, well maybe Roger, but, <laughs> but there are some yeah. source documents that are pretty old that have this concept. In it, so. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's a, I think it's a really good point. Cause I, that's something kind of a version of what I tried to practice as a, a people leader. It's kind of a combination of the servant, the servant leader and like the hands-off manager. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really like the term manager. I, I feel like you manage things. You don't manage people. Um, you have to lead people. So I tried I try to embrace as much as possible personally the the servant leader versus you know and the hands off manager to do those sorts of things. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to what we've been talking about this whole time is if you're listening to what the people want, what the people that follow you want and are looking for in general, and you are there to facilitate providing that to them, it becomes less about you, and they end up getting more value out of it, which means they end up wanting you to be part of the process no matter what, and which is exactly what everybody wants. So it ends up being a net positive for everybody. Um, I don't know. I think it's, I, when you, when we were talking about it the other day or messaging back and forth and even before this, it, it just kind of coming back to the beginning, it, it reinforces for me how much these sorts of mediums actually work really well for connecting with other human beings. And I think that's really what the point of all of this is, regardless of whether you do what you do professionally or what I do, it doesn't matter. It comes back to the same thing. Mm, connecting. Exactly. Well, Ty, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on the show today. This has been an awesome Awesome time talking yeah. to you. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your week. Uh, um, do you want to plug anything 
where anyone can follow you or anything that you want to put out there? Hey, the thing that I would just say is that it has never been easier to, uh, for people out there who are Christians, I just want to remind you, it's never been easier to invite someone to check out church. And for those of you who maybe uh, haven't been to church or, or haven't, you know, have been curious about church, it's never been easier to check out a church. Uh, a lot of churches are doing what we're, you know, what we're doing. Um, so it's, uh, it's, uh, easy, easy to check out and low threat. So, um, you can catch us at, uh, wordandtable.org forward slash live stream on Sunday mornings at, uh, 10 AM Eastern daylight. But, um, so yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you, man. Have a great afternoon and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, huge thanks to Tag for joining the show today. Um, I hope that the content was beneficial for all of you. Um, it's really an interesting conversation to be talking about on a regular basis where we're embracing new ways of building relationships with people, whether you are in pastoral ministry like Tag or myself in sales or whatever profession you happen to work in. We all can learn more, I think, from you know hearing the stories of other people and how, how the situation has really affected us personally. More importantly, how that effect has actually created a, a reaction that we can go and find new ways to have real human engagement. So thank you all again so much for joining the at-home show. I really appreciate it. This episode um, will be preceded by some uh, some other content I've got coming here soon with some more folks from various different, very varied and different backgrounds. I'm chirping on my own words. So please stay tuned. If you like the content, please hit the subscribe button below. That way you get notifications. I'm trying to put out as much as I possibly can about not just how to how we deal with this that term new normal everyone's using, how we how we work in this and live in this environment, but also how we do things like time management and goal planning and really just take better control of the time that we have so we can feel better about ourselves on a daily basis. Um, and if you like the video, hit like. It really helps the channel a lot. Thank you all so much. Have a great afternoon.